Well, it's certainly a blessing uh, to be in the house of the Lord again. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful uh, to have everyone praying for one another as, as we ought to because the Lord Jesus Christ commands that we pray for one another. And it's been a blessing throughout all of this pandemic, throughout all of this season of hardship, this season of, of trials and tribulations, we still pray for one another because our Lord Jesus Christ had prayed for us, as you remember in John 17. And so we find here as we come, and I want to first thank you, you know, for the prayers of my dear sister who was lost her life and and uh, January 1st of 2021. But all is really not lost because uh, she was going home. And so you find, and we find it, it was a glorious time as we all gathered together as a home going. The world don't understand that. The world, of course, was in panic and remained in panic. But one day they will face the true and living God. And we pray that they would, of course, receive Christ before they do. So I have only a brief message this morning for January of 2021. I know that I could possibly be very long-winded, perhaps, but, but today uh, is going to be a short message. Everyone says, well, that's what most preachers say, right? <laughs> Amen. Of course, I came in uh, a little late this morning, and um, not only still what the lingering of my sister in mind and a family in mind and those who were lost in mind. And then, of course, the physical attack of my body and my back. And so that brought me even later as the enemy was trying to keep me away. But he couldn't. So I am blessed to be here and you are a blessing as I see you all. So uh, I guess we'll get started here, amen. Let's talk about the one to whom first loved us, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, our awesome God, amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, as we come before you in your mighty throne of grace, Lord God, that, Lord, that we would lift you up on high. Bless your holy name, Lord. And that, Lord, as we gather together, Lord God, that we would be a blessing to one another. We ask, Lord God, that these words, Lord God, be spoken, Lord God, by the spirit of truth. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I get my Bible. Notice, if you will, I, I, did, I did go and, and I shopped very early to go get a back brace. And um, you know what? Right now, the Lord said, you don't need it. Amen. Let me ask a quick question. And uh, the question is this, is that through all of this pandemic and, and, uh, and how the social media was trying to keep our attention, you know, toward social issues, this many social issues that went on in 2020, but yet and still, we have the word of God 
that kept us and keep us and mindful of him. And through 2020, we've had many a blessings, amen? amen. <laughs> many a blessings. You know, we can count them one by one. Perhaps we still were going to be counting them even when we return home. Let me just get something to see the Bible with here. <laughs> That's glasses, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes, here they are. Here we are. <laughs> and so in counting our blessings, you know, through all of this and through all of this, we turn back to one of our favorite chapters of one of our favorite books that we went through in the year 2020. And I know everyone's probably guessing and saying, we know for sure, are you going to First Peter? <laughs> it is true. We are going to First Peter because I'm going to read here these verses, and I'm hoping they were encouragement to you for 2020, as it was for me. Turn with me to chapter 1 of 1 Peter. And we're going to read verses 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, which have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to the inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. I enjoyed this portion of scripture and it kept it well to my heart as the Lord had given that, those verses to us throughout the season and of this pandemic and social issues of today. You see, because that way we keep our minds on the Lord. Look what it says here in verse 3. It says, blessed be the God and Father. Bless God. We are to bless God. First and foremost in our thoughts, in our lives, as we get up, in the morning, as we seek him daily, we are to bless God. He ought to be the center of our life. Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless him. Turn to Psalms 103 for a moment. Psalms 103. It says this in verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless God. It's our first and foremost things in our life is to bless him in his holy name. Bless him with all our soul. Bless him with everything that's within us. Our mind, body, and soul. We are to bless God. Everything. All about us. Everything within us. We are to bless God. Back in your text again, in First Peter. Let 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy. He hath begotten us again. We are born again because of his mercy and because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let me get to my notes here. We are to bless God. So, what does it mean here when it says that we are kept by him? In other words, it's saying, verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that is, fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. How many remember, verse 4, how many remember what, we, what was said there back in the teachings that we taught early in the year of 2020? And to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and it says, reserved in heaven for who? Have you not put your name in there yet? It's reserved in heaven for you. For you. You apply your name. Certainly if you have been begotten, certainly if you have been born again, this is reserved for you. I have to tell you this, my sister, She had said to her daughter, don't worry. Don't worry, because she had believed in this hope, this hope of the heaven reserved for her. She put her trust in God, her faith in him, because she believed the hope that was in Jesus Christ. So, I'm hoping that you have that same hope and that you would carry that same hope as our coaches would say to us, finish strong. Finish strong, finish the race strong. Come through the tape strong. Break through the tape strong as we used to lean forward to finish the race. Finish strong because you have the hope of Jesus Christ. He will carry you through. We have that hope. Speaking of hope, it says there, in verse 3, that you have a living hope. A living hope. A hope that is alive, not a dead hope, like the world has hope. We have hope of sure certainty. And we can count on the word of God. The Bible tells us that blessed hope and Titus Chapter 2, verse 13, it says, We have a blessed hope, looking for the blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a joyful hope. Thessalonians tells us, it says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even in you the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? We have a joyful hope. We have a comforting hope. We have a comforting hope. Again, in Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. I'll wait until you get there. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18. It says this, verse 13, but 
I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Bless God, because I know one day that I will see her once again. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall first for rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We have a comforting hope. During this pandemic, during this COVID virus, during this time of, of trials and tribulation, the Bible tells us that we have a comforting hope. There are others who have lost others here. We know of people who, who have passed away during this pandemic, but we have a comforting hope. We have a comforting hope. We shall see them again. We have an anchoring hope. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, it says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. We have a purifying hope. 1 John 3, 3 tells us that, And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. So the source of our hope is God's word. It's his word. Turn with me to Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. It says this, For whatever... For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we would have the word of God as a source of hope. Hope is something that we should be presenting to others. This living hope, this hope should be presented to this lost and dying world who's living in darkness. You see, we have been delivered from darkness into the marvelous light. We have that hope that's within us. We have that hope that only the Lord God can give us. And we need to tell others about this hope, the challenge of 2021. And there'll be many, there'll be many challenges. We know there'll be challenges because yes, the Bible says in this world, you will have trouble. They hated him, so they're gonna hate you and I too. But praise be to God, we have the living hope, we have the hope that we can tell others about. Glory. Here's a challenge to the congregation as well as myself. We challenge and we are challenged to tell one person this year about the hope. Tell somebody about the hope. Stand up for Jesus in 2021. Tell them about the hope. Tell them about the life that they can receive 
if they believe and trust in the Lord, thy God, Jesus Christ. Right. Tell them about the hope. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5, let's read that for a moment. It says, verse, verse 15, I'm sorry, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Be ready in 2021 to tell them about Jesus Christ. He is our hope. Just because we wear a mask, that don't mean we should be silent. Tell them about the hope that's in Christ. Life is short. Life is very short. My sister, of course, younger than myself, with nearly two years, and she understood that life was short. And we understand being herself at 65 years old, you know, that's not a long time. Not when we get there. It's not a long time. In comparison to the word of God and eternity. When you compare it to eternity, 65 is only a blip. It's not even a full drop. Okay. So we tell others. We should be motivated. And we should be motivated by what back in your text we should be motivated by the fact that it says here that to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. We can put our trust and hope in the real deal. It won't fade. The world put their hope in their job. They put their hope in their own physical strength. They put their hope in the 401k. They put their hope because they have a doctor. They have a lawyer. They put their hope in everything that's going to fade away. But we need to tell them that you need to put your hope in Jesus. Amen. That will never fade. Never fade. We need to stop wasting our time in these things of this world. So much effort that we put in, 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 in things that just going to fade away. So much time wasted. So much time in social issues that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Because when you get there at the end of the day, and he's going to not ask you, did you vote for President so-and-so? He's not going to ask you if you had your opinion about Black Lives Matter. He's not going to ask you that. He's going to say, who do you say I am? He's going to say, who is Jesus? That's who he's going to talk about. And so we got to put a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Get away from those other things and Put your, all your effort, your heart, mind, and soul into Jesus Christ and him only. Amen. Wasted efforts in putting our hope in things that don't matter. We need to tell people about Christ.
I got this from uh, Chuck Swinwall. He said this, hope is a wonderful gift from God, a source of strength, courage in the face of life's hardship and trials. Hope is when we are trapped in a tunnel of misery. Hope points to the light at the end. Hope is when we are overworked and exhausted. Hope gives us fresh energy. When we are discouraged, hope lifts our spirits. When we are tempted to quit, hope keeps us going. When we lose our way and confusion blurs the destination, hope dulls the, dulls the edge of the panic. When we struggle with crippling disease or lingering illness, hope helps us preserve beyond, persevere beyond the pain. When we fear the worst, hope brings reminders that God is still in control. Put it simply this, when life hurts and dream fades, nothing helps like hope. Hope in the Lord. We have a living hope in a person, in a person, Jesus Christ. By the resurrection, it says, of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then he goes on and he says, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God. How many know there is no one who can take anything away from the God, from God's hand? He holds it all together. He has all power and authority given to him. Everything and nothing can be pulled away. You can't be plucked from the Lord Jesus Christ. Because all power is his. So we can walk around with our heads held high. Heads held high. Yes. Because we are kept by the power of God. Amen. And so with that, we can greatly rejoice. We can rejoice in the heaviness of our trials and temptation. What did James says? He tells us that even in our trials and temptations, we still can rejoice. The Bible tells us to rejoice always. It didn't say rejoice sometimes. It says rejoice always. Even in my trials, even in the temptations, even in my hurts and my pains and my suffering. Yes! Because you have Jesus Christ, the hope. Tell the world about the hope. I said that this was going to be a very brief message. Actually, I got about 50 more pages already. But the point is here to start off 2021. 2021, believe in the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead for your sin and mine, for the glory of God. The hope. So now we conclude today and we let everyone know that Jesus is alive. He's alive and well, and they have hope. So let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Let the church sing. Amen. Let the church sing. Amen. Let the church sing. Amen. 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 All the
other men saying, all the men saying, all the men saying, amen, amen, let the women sing. Let the women sing. Let the women sing. Amen. Amen. Everybody sing. Amen. Everybody sing. Amen. Everybody sing. Amen. 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 We were saying that this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, yeah, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. We're going to tell the amen. Everybody sing. Everybody sing. Amen. 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 Y'all agree to the word of God that he is the living hope. You agree the fact that I'm going to tell somebody, this little light of mine is going to tell somebody this year, we're going to go out, despite all of the issues of life, we're going to tell somebody this year. Well, this is the word of God, and we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to thank you, Lord God, for you are Lord on high. We thank you, Lord God, as we come to exalt you, Lord God. We don't know what's in store for 2021, but we do know by the based on the word of God that there is hope. There is hope. And we thank you, dear Lord God, and we appreciate you. Help us and strengthen us, Lord God, so that, Lord we would be a light to those in the 2021 living in darkness to help them, Lord God, find a way. We know, Lord God, that you are the way maker and that, Lord, you want everyone to come and repent toward you, Lord, to glorify your holy name. We give thanks to you and Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.